101 Dalmatians by Disney, narrated by me. Not so very long ago, a Dalmatian named Pongo lived in a cozy London townhouse with his mate Perdita and their humans Roger and Anita. Perdita and Pongo were especially happy because Purdy was due to have a litter of puppies very soon. One afternoon, Roger and Anita were startled by a loud honking horn and screeching tires outside their home. Within moments, Anita's old schoolmate, Cruella de Vil, swept into the house. Anita, darling, she cooed, strutting into the parlor, smoking a cigarette. Cruella looked around the house. For heaven's sakes, where are they? she asked. Who, Cruella? asked Anita. The puppies, Cruella said. Where are the little brutes? Oh, it'll be at least three weeks said Anita. She paused, noticing Cruella's shaggy coat. Cruella, isn't that a new fur coat? Cruella pulled the thick fur around herself lovingly. My only true love, darling. Cruella twirled around. I worship furs, she exclaimed. Then Cruella paused to admire a photograph of Pongo and Perdita on the wall. I've got to run, darling, Cruella said. Now let me know when the puppies arrive. Yes, Cruella, said Anita. See you in three weeks, Cruella shouted as she marched out the front door. Exactly three weeks later, Purdy had her puppies. Pongo and Roger waited nervously in the kitchen. The puppies are here, Nanny exclaimed. Purdy had fifteen puppies. Just then there was a tremendous flash of lightning and a big boom of thunder. A dark shadow loomed in the doorway. Fifteen puppies! Cruella Deville exclaimed, strutting into the kitchen. How marvelous! I'll take them all, the whole litter! She waved her wallet around in the air. We're not selling the puppies, Roger declared. Not a single one, and that's final. Cruella was furious. I'll get even, you just wait, she screamed as she stomped out of the house. The puppies grew quickly. Within a few weeks they were covered in spots. But one evening when Purdy and Pongo were out for their walk, two crooks, Horace and Jasper, forced their way into the house and stole the puppies. The police had no leads. Purdy and Pongo were heartbroken. Pongo knew it was up to them to find the puppies. So the next evening, Pongo called to all the dogs of London from the park's tallest hill during the twilight bark. It was an all-dog alert. An old sheepdog known as the Colonel heard the call. He snapped into action, sending his tabby cat friend Sergeant Tibbs to investigate a creepy old mansion nearby called Horrible Hall. Sergeant Tibbs snuck into the crumbling house and crept into a large, shabby room. He was stunned. The room was filled with spotted puppies, ninety-nine of them, including Pongo and Purdy's puppies. But Horace and Jasper were guarding them. The colonel told Pongo and Perdita during the twilight bark to come right away. They had located the missing puppies and then some. While they waited for Pongo and Purdy to arrive, the Colonel and Sergeant Tibbs saw a car screech to a halt outside and a figure rushing into Horrible Hall. Better see what's up, said the Colonel to Sergeant Tibbs. Tibbs crept back inside. It was Cruella de Vil. She had hired Horace and Jasper to dognap the puppies. It's got to be done tonight, Cruella yelled. Jasper and Horace cowered on the sofa. But they ain't big enough, said Horace. Jasper agreed. Sergeant Tibbs felt his blood turn cold. He couldn't believe it. Cruella de Vil was planning to make coats out of the Dalmatian puppies. Then we'll settle for a half dozen. We can't wait, she shouted. Horace and Jasper cornered the puppies. But just then, Pongo and Perdita jumped through the window and attacked the two henchmen. Tibbs used the distraction to lead the puppies out of Horrible Hall and into the snowy night. Pongo and Purdy followed their puppies. 
but Jasper and Horace were not far behind them. They had to keep running. It was a bitterly cold night. Purdy led the long line of puppies through the driving snow while Pongo tried to cover their tracks. They were all tired and hungry, but they would not be safe until they got back to London. When Cruella discovered that Horace and Jasper had let the puppies escape, she was enraged. She leaped into her long purple car and frantically searched for the Dalmatians. Pongo, Purdy, and the puppies were hiding in the blacksmith shop outside London. There was a delivery truck nearby that was leaving for the city soon, and Pongo planned to get all the puppies on it. But how could he do it without being seen? Cruella's car was parked right in front of the shop. Two of the puppies began to play in the ashes near the old fireplace. Pongo saw that the puppy's spotted fur was covered in black soot. This gave Pongo an idea. We'll all roll in the soot, he cried, diving into the big pile of the ash. The puppies followed, rolling around in the soot. When they were all done, all their spots were hidden. They looked like regular black dogs. The Dalmatians were running out of time. They had to get the puppies on that truck. One by one, the puppies walked to the truck. But as the last few puppies left the shop, some melting snow dripped on them, washing away the soot and revealing their spotted coats. They were discovered. Horace! Jasper! After them! screamed Cruella. The truck rattled away as she chased it. Horace and Jasper jumped into their truck and joined the chase. Cruella was very close to catching the Dalmatians. She cackled with glee, but suddenly Horace and Jasper lost control of their truck and crashed right into Cruella's car. Cruella, Horace, and Jasper tumbled into a ditch while the Dalmatians' truck drove safely away. Roger, Anita, and Nanny were delighted that Pongo, Purdy, and the puppies were safely home. Nanny counted all of the Dalmatian puppies. A hundred and one, she gasped. What will we do with them? asked Anita. We'll keep them, exclaimed Roger. Then everyone gathered around the piano as Roger played. The whole family was together again, at last, with some new additions. <laughs>